Sam Short with me, John. Today we're going to be looking at this, the Browning Synergy Black Ice. A gun that I'm very fond of, actually. Um, however, there may be a rather large con section at the end. So, uh, let's start, as we always do, with a nice overview. Pad. Uh, the pad's a funny shape, but it is interchangeable. We get different lengths. Uh, in fact, let's have a little look in the box, and as we talk about things, I can show you what you get extra of. <laughs> Here it is, the Browning Synergy Black Ice Box. Black, beautiful, and actually really very stylish for Browning. Uh, something a bit more modern and on point for today's market, even though this gun is, Christ, this gun's not, but it's been around for what, 14 years now? Black liner, instructions, greasy plastic, uh, keep your gun nice and rust free, I suppose. Spare combs that will come into point somewhere, a spare pad, three spare chokes and a choke key, because you've got two in the gun, that's five in total, a trigger lock, which is very important, and two spare triggers. Alright, sorry. Back to the gun. So, the pad. Here we go. Uh, you have different lengths, as you can see. This one is half an inch shorter. Uh, they did do spaces as well, so you can kind of mate it all together and sort of build something to your length. The problem being is where you've not got a flat butt or anything to work from, if you're very tall like me, or if you're very short, there's not a lot you can do with this gun. You really have to be somewhere in the mid-range of humanity's size to make it fit. Moving on, you have the plastic composite stock. It's not the nicest plastic in the world, and that's the first thing that will strike you when you pick one of these up, is nowadays, with a lot of quality plastics out there, and rubberized plastics, there's a lot better looking stuff out there. However, you have to think about the longevity of this sort of stuff. The rubberized finish on a lot of nicer guns that were, at the time, rubberized, are starting to look old, a bit naff. This still looks good. It still looks the same as the day it came out of the factory, and that really counts for something. Plus, you can chuck a bit of silicon oil on there and make it pop if you really, really want to. Rubberized inserts, and I believe these are interchangeable, uh, but don't hold me careful like because I've never had to change any. Moving back quickly, we have this wonderful comb piece. Quite simply, let's just pop her apart. Quite simply, get a mallet and a drift, and you can drift quickly. Drift this out. Put that hammer up. And as it's out, it will then push forward like this and comes off. What you now have is three different sizes of, of comb piece, and they come out at slightly different widths, slightly different casts, I suppose you could call it, and it actually allows you face cast. Where the stock isn't really bendable, you can't add a lot of cast, it's up to these combs to make that possible for you. As you can see, you've got a bunch of lines here, and you've got some guidelines here. As long as you don't take it too high, and even if you do take it too high, you can modify this stock piece if you've got a spare stock, just to give you a little bit of extra height. You can put this stock, this piece on anywhere you like, really, from up high to down low. And for now, we're just going to pop it nicely in the middle. So we put the larger comb piece on there, and actually that gives you a real nice radius to the stock. If you put it at the lowest thing, it almost looks like a normal gun, really. But it's nice to be able to make it higher, lower, and you can make it shoot sort of how you want. 
However, it is not a particularly quick adjustment. These fit very, very tightly, and they do occasionally take some mild persuasion to come on and off and sit in the right position. However, a touch of the right lubricant, they'll come on and off a bit easier, but you want it on there tight, you don't want it moving around. And some of the ones that have, people have played with a lot, the comb and that can lose that sort of tight mating and you can end up with something that's a bit sloppy. But, you know, that's fine, because you can just buy new ones. Anyway, let's get back onto very quickly. The profile of this gun is very low, and that's because this gun sits together very differently to your standard Browning. As you can see, it is just two chamber sizes there, nothing too exciting, no big blocks on the bottom, no bites. And on the bottom of here, you've got no locking pieces, all you've got is probably about two and a half, three mil of metal. So that allows you to have an extremely low profile gun. I'll do that again for you just so you can see. It's very different to your standard sort of browning, although you are aiming for locking pieces to lock into certain pieces those pieces are different to your standard gun. Your lock is also different, you have a lower bite that locks either side here. Whether that's going to give you the longevity of a browning, who knows, they've not been around long enough yet. However, some of the ones that have been hammered more are starting to be less than tight, let's say. So what you're aiming for is these large lokes here to go into the two channels here. So that actually requires you to sort of push it in where it's got sprung ejectors from the side like that as opposed to hooking it down like you would a usual browning. So that comes in like that and closes up like that with constant pressure because unlike a normal browning, it's got ejector springs built into the barrels and not into the forehead. All right, uh, you have a manual safety with selector. Actually, it's one of my favorite things around this gun is I think the whole safety system, the whole safety catch is very sleek and moves and operates very, very well. It's nice, it's coarse enough, you can use it in all weathers, it's not going to be unslippery, and the profile is actually really very pleasant. Suits the standard modern feel of the gun very well. It's pleasant, I like it. Uh, the trigger is adjustable, obviously, and interchangeable because you have two spares. Uh, browning, you can have true right-handed, flat, thin, there's, a, I don't know, probably about six or seven triggers I can think of that will fit to this gun. So you can really make it your own, and you can have it anywhere along this thing it's not like on a, a Beretta where you've only got the three notches on here because of the adjuster screw you can really put it more or less anywhere you want. Engraving there isn't much to speak of it says Synergy on the side and it's got the Synergy logo the three things that look like a B and a C uh, but not really look like three cogs it looks like Browning Synergy logo I suppose uh, and that's repeated throughout the action a few times browning butt mark on the trigger guard and I do think again I love the trigger guard I love the inlet I love everything about it it's just it's cool um, so cool I once owned one of these uh, however it was a long time ago and I was a lot younger and the world was a lot different actually synthetic guns weren't so popular back then you know you couldn't the, the synthetic things were around were usually cheap semi-automatics and they had a bad reputation for being yobbish and so everyone took the piss out of me for being a yob and so I got rid of it fairly shortly after I got it and moved back to a Browning GTI which I loved and shot significantly uh, more hassle free. But do I resent uh, not having one? Yeah probably. Anyway a good friend of mine then bought one properly in 2012 and I borrowed it a fair few times to go and shoot and I enjoyed it. I did enjoy that a lot. It was good fun and it brought back a lot of old memories. However his gun had some issues but we'll go into those right at the end because you know I don't want to put a damper on this pretty awesome looking gun. Uh, moving on, the forend is also immensely low profile. Where you don't have to rely on the structural integrity of a piece of wood, and plastic is probably a lot stronger, it's extremely thin. All you've really got is a shroud for your metal work. It's also real nice that what they've done is they've given you a plastic bolt-on piece to the gun, so it all makes up and leaves you with a really nice streamlined look around the gun. Do I like it? Yeah, of course I like it, it's lovely. It's not really a browning though, and this is what was probably the overriding thing that I should say at the moment, is those of you who love browning, please just be aware that this doesn't shoot or feel or handle like any other gun known to man. And that's really why it's amazing, but also it's, it's a very marmite thing. Not just the looks, but the shooting of it is very different. But, you know, it's going to be when the stock is made of plastic. However, it's so unbelievably front heavy that you can almost handle it. 
actually. Um, it's so different, you know, it's not unpleasantly balanced in that it's trying to be well balanced but it's front heavy. It's so front heavy that you can, it shoots very differently, there you go, it just shoots differently. Uh, anyway, you have a slight step up on the rib that tapers down. It does lend this gun to shooting a little high, uh, so it's, it's a shoot the legs off type of gun, just the way the rib is designed. And you have the two tubes underneath. They're lovely, they work uh, very well. Uh, I think they're 18.7 board. It was one of the first pro overboard Brownings, really. Vented mid rib, and my favourite thing about this gun, one of my favourite things about this gun, and it's a bit weird for somebody who doesn't really love chokes particularly, but especially extended ones, but oh my goodness, aren't they? They're literally the most beautiful things in the world. Like, I just, if I owned one of these again, I would keep the chokes in a glass thing on the wall because they are so useful and bounce lights off them. In fact, if I, you could have them all just rotating and be like little disco balls, they are wonderful. Um, and in fact, enjoy this choke porn. else to any other chokes but I mean it, it's beautiful there's nothing about those that don't just make you happy and I think this is this whole gun overall is a gun that you don't buy to make anyone else happy this is a selfish gun you buy this to make yourself happy it's beautiful the top lever as well I should mention is it's just got that beautiful sort of sway to the right hand and it is oh, I just love it like the whole the whole design the whole concept is just is beautiful but then like I've said I've had one it's a gun from my youth and I am I've got emotional attachment to this gun, which is nice. Anyway, so in the shooting, how does it shoot differently? You know, it requires a lot more pre-planning. It's not a gun you can ambush with. Where you've got so much left-hand weight, even though the gun really doesn't weigh very much, it does require certainly a bit more forethought. And actually, I'll tell you what, it's very repeatable, but it is does require forethought. It's not something you can stab around with any consistency because you don't have the rear end weight to sort of come around with you. I used mine for a bit of trap shooting, it shot trap very well, and actually it shot, shot skeet very well. However, what it didn't do very well was sort of super close crosses, that sort of thing where actually you need a gun that you can just get in and smash with consistently. I liked it, I did like it. However, my friend's gun that he had, certainly we ended up putting about four ounces of lead in the back of his stock. And it just, it, although it took the weight back a bit, I'm not sure whether it made it bad or worse, but it was an interesting experiment. We put a lot more in, we put a lot less in, and we could, you can change this gun to be very normal, and you can change this gun to be a lot less normal. The answer we, we came up with was actually, if you want the normal feeling, the normal balance one, buy the Woodstock version, which we will probably talk about quickly. Uh, they have a habit of breaking the Woodstock versions. Um, I know Browning Wood, being American Walnut, is a bit more brittle than most other things, but I've had a couple of synergies broken over others. Plus, I think if you're gonna buy this gun, Genuinely, the plastic one is the cooler looking of the two. There you go, that's my opinion. Um, it may shock people to know. <laughs> so, it shoots well, it does shoot well. However, like I say, you need to end up shooting underneath stuff. They do tend have a tendency to shoot high. You want to go put the bead as a figure of eight, but a true figure of eight, no overlap, and then the target on top of that, and you will break it more often than not. It's not a gun to point straight at stuff because the pattern is just that little high. I think it's probably 70 30, maybe 80 20. Bad points. It's plastic. It's a black plastic gun. You know, you're never going to get away from the stigma of black plastic guns, and um, there's always going to be people out there who don't like them. Yeah, it's a bit modern, but I don't particularly care um, for people's opinions. So I would still probably take one out nowadays. However, when I was younger, probably more impressionable and probably more eager to please the world. I did peer pressure, yet yeah, peer pressured out of it. However, the world has changed and these are more acceptable now. However, strangely enough, they're no longer a stock item. So, <laughs> something I don't really understand in a world where it's probably now very acceptable, they're no longer stock it. Also, probably because it'd be over £2,000 now brand new, which is a lot of money. Second hand values, 
uh, rock out, I think this one's up at 1350, they're all around that. You can pick up more more tired ones for probably under the thousand pound mark, but you're not going to be having all of this gear with it. Definitely worth investing in something a little bit better, a little bit more tidy with the combs, the pads, the chokes, the box, the full gear, gear in my opinion anyway. Uh, reliability wise, there was a few issues when they first came out. However, I think they have really ironed those out over the years. If you're buying something new, and I think they are probably available new to special order, you might have some teething issues. Uh, something that I've experienced firsthand is the ejectors. I've had the ejectors are held on by a little roll pin there. Uh, well, not a roll pin, a pin. The pin holds the ejector shroud, let's say, onto the ejector rod in here with all those bits. And I've had a pair of those snap on a customer. Uh, halfway around a clay shoot whilst I was shooting with him. It was probably one of the more embarrassing moments of my uh, shooting career or adult life, really. Just beware that you're not paying for the browning action. The browning action that is the browning superpose, which is all up there in the Marukus and the 525s, 325s, 125s, the B25s, is probably one of the best actions known to man. This is cutting edge. And a bit like anything that is new to the market, the 8 to 8 U, that sort of thing, there is going to be teething problems. Unfortunately, yeah, you know, the way I look at it is this was a bit of a test bed, and a lot of the technology, the profile that was in this gun has gone into the 725. However, they haven't really met the same market with the 725, I don't think, as this. This was such a wonderful new age thing. Uh, it captured my heart certainly, and I hope it captures yours. It's beautiful, we like it, it's cool. It's not beautiful actually, it's... I was trying to think of the best word for it. It's not elegant, it is quite elegant in its own way. Uh, elegant like a machine. Stylish, it's got style. It has got style, and it's got its own sort of character around that. Go and shoot one, see what you think. Uh, I've shot the 13 and the 32 inch, I think the 13 inch is vastly better, the 32 inch is just a bit too much gun. Guys, uh, the big question, would I own one? I have owned one. And would I own one again? Yeah, I probably would. Could I justify spending 1400 quid for it to sit in the cabinet? Probably not. And for me, actually, I think it retains a more special feeling that I can pick one up occasionally and sort of look back on the olden days and think, yeah, I had fun. Twice, two times round I had fun with one of these. Go give one a go, see what you think. The only thing I would say is I wouldn't probably take one on a game shoot.